Hello welcome to Relation Tales. Today we're going to have some more stories from Reddit. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to my channel, like the video if you enjoy it, and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now, without further ado, let's go. Here is my story. My name is Matt, I am 38 years old, and my ex-wife Liz is around 40. I met Liz back in 2013 on a sports-related online forum when I was 28 and she was 30. The forum focused on sports topics. Liz struck me as fantastic, intelligent, well-mannered, and practical. We actively communicated for about six months then spent a year visiting each other every weekend until we discussed living together. I am from New Jersey, and she is from a provincial town. The condition for her to move in with me was only one, an official marriage. It was all by mutual consent. I also wanted a family and was thinking about marriage at that time, so I agreed. The first rule I learned in marriage is never marry a woman older than you unless the man is energetically twice as strong. Otherwise, she will constantly try to bend you to her will, arguing that she is older, more experienced, smarter. In my case, that's exactly how it was. I didn't bend, but an enormous amount of energy was wasted resisting her pressure. The second rule is not to pull a woman away from a mother who won't let her go. It's terrible because then you have to live and fight with two. When I took Liz and brought her to me, we started living in a rented apartment. She got a new job. I cannot put into words how many nerves I spent on her. Either she went to her mother after a scandal, or her mother spoke ill of me and called her daughter back. This went on for exactly five years. Strangely enough, her mother fell behind our family. When our son was born, the birth was difficult, and few relatives supported us. When my mother-in-law came to help with the baby, she spent one night with us and left the next day, complaining about poor health. Surprisingly, after five years of knowing, she couldn't last even one day. As a result, we raised the child ourselves as best we could. There were problems, but we somehow coped with them together. Everything escalated when we decided to move to the European Union. Many acquaintances were scattered around Europe, boasting of better living conditions than in America, and Liz also wanted to move, especially since she was invited abroad for work. From my experience, I'll say if you want to move, do it yourself without wives. Women in Europe seem to go crazy. We moved on her employment contract and invitation. And here the most interesting begins. Scandals started immediately after signing the contract and receiving the first salary. That's when I began to understand that our family was on the verge of collapse. Exactly after six months of living in Europe, when I solved all organizational problems, adapted my son to kindergarten, and arranged our life. In short, everything was set up and adjusted. Liz began to exert strong pressure on me. Her career was improving sharply, and I began to feel that I was being dumped in the most disgusting way, through inversion of domination and manipulation with intimacy. At first, I tried to figure out our relationship with the help of psychological books, but the more I read, the clearer it became that our relationship was not healthy. I learned a lot about myself. I was blackmailed, threatened, nasty things were written about me to mutual acquaintances. It was my test of courage, and for her, it was an attempt to control me. She tried to control every step of mine, suspected me of infidelity out of the blue, demanded passwords for all my social networks. Ironically, as soon as I started demanding the same in return, she threw a real tantrum and blamed me for mistrust. These were the signs of an abuser. I didn't immediately suspect my wife of having an affair. Everything fell into place when one evening she left her phone on the bedside table and went to take a shower. A few notifications came in and my gaze involuntarily caught the screen where text messages were displayed. I couldn't read it all, but from individual phrases, I understood they were love messages. Naturally, I didn't keep silent and demanded an explanation from Liz. After long arguments and shouts, it turned out that she did indeed have a lover, here, a younger guy who was an intern at her workplace. But the most painful part of this story was not that she had a lover but that she justified her infidelity with my bad behavior. She claimed that I spent little time with her, was often at work, hadn't given her flowers or taken her on a date for a long time. She thought that I had a lover, so in defiance, she decided to have one too. The anger I felt from this made me start smashing everything that came into my hands on the floor. I had never heard a more vile justification in my life, especially after a month of her attempts to control me. Naturally, divorce was imminent. The most hurtful part was for my son because taking him and moving him out of the country seemed impossible. When we talked about divorce and who would keep the child, Liz threatened to spend all the money on legal battles and make my life anything but peaceful. Exactly a year and two months ago, we divorced. After which, I gathered all my things and documents, went to the airport, and returned to my native America. I felt like a fugitive with no money in my pocket. I left with a feeling that the whole world had collapsed. 
It hurts now to realize that I lost 10 years on this marriage. It was a complete collapse of all hopes for a beautiful old age in Europe with a kind grandmother like Liz and grandchildren. I had absolutely no support when I returned home, but fortunately, I had my own housing inherited from distant relatives. For a while, I felt nauseous from any women, recoiling from them like the plague. But ironically, a few months later, I became friends with a prostitute, polite, beautiful, and young. However, I needed female attention, someone to talk to without any emotional attachment, someone with whom nothing would connect me except intimacy. I became friends with the prostitute to the extent that I took her as company. Somewhere about a year later, we parted ways like ships at sea. It really worked and pushed all thoughts of my ex-wife away, much better than immediately jumping into relationships with other women. After the divorce, I needed time to heal. I managed to let go of this situation and return to normal life. Now I am 38 years old. I have a stable income from a small business that suits me. I don't face financial difficulties. Instead of loans, I bought a motorcycle, fulfilling my childhood dream, albeit 20 years later. I regularly meet up with friends. As for downsides, I can note the lack of steady relationships and the need to solve everyday issues on my own. When asked how I've developed in a year, bought a jeep and a small house by the sea, I react with mild bewilderment. I'm just an ordinary person living within my real possibilities. During the time after the divorce, I learned a few simple rules. Golden rule number one. After a breakup, it's not worth immediately seeking new relationships. It's extremely dangerous, and I faced it on my own experience. After a divorce, women, as if sensing your mood, start showing increased interest. Single attractive girls glare at you and look for their daddy, while women with children try to surround and get support in return. Therefore, until you restore your lost confidence and self-esteem, it's not worth building serious relationships to avoid a double blow. The second point, don't enter into a relationship with an ex. This creates an illusion of reviving old ties, and women feel it, trying to keep their distance. From the perspective of someone who has seen through this, it can look funny. You meet someone new, and she steps aside for no apparent reason. It is important to discuss financial matters before marriage, but better late than never. Never disclose your income, passwords, and the like. Women pay close attention to every move you make, and in case of divorce, your property becomes vulnerable. Their goal is simple, if you have no money, you have nowhere to go. I was just lucky in this case. Finally, the inversion of dominance happens to everyone. The trigger usually is the arrival of children. Over time, you stop being a beloved husband and turn into a source of income and a solution to all her problems. Therefore, it is important to maintain your independence and avoid falling into this trap. Now I live alone, and over time, it has even stopped being oppressive. I just lead my life, breakfast in the morning, work during the day, dinner, reading, and sleep in the evening. On weekends, complete detachment with friends. The main thing is to have some occupation, a hobby, whatever it may be. The only thing that hurts is that communication with my son has almost ceased after the divorce. Alas, this was to be expected. I miss my son, but there are no options. The ex does not allow him to communicate with me, and the child is too young to arrange meetings on his own. I think about a family in the future, but if it happens, it will only be within the framework of mutually beneficial cohabitation without registrations, joint real estate, businesses, and so on. Better this way than enduring eternal torment in a loveless family. But the most important thing is to forget about the negativity and create a habitable island for yourself. Living in a family without love is unbearable. It's better to be alone than endure that. And the best revenge for the ex-wife is simply to become happy without her. She won't survive that. That's the story. If you liked it, please support us with a like as well as subscribe to our channel. Write in the comments what you think about the story. Thank you for being here with us.